The academic staff union of universities on Monday declared a two-week warning strike over non-payment of salaries of lecturers not enrolled in the federal government's integrated personnel and payroll information system. National President of the Union, Biodun Ogunyemi, who read the declaration after the ASU National Executive Council meeting held in Enugu, said the warning strike takes effect today, March 9. According to him, the strike action is to compel federal government to implement the agreement and resolution of memorandum of action it had with the union from 2009, 2013, 2017 and 2019. And joining us by phone is Dele Ashiro, ASU President, Unilag Chapter. Good morning, Dele, and thank you for joining us. Now, I would like to ask, what led to this decision of going on a two-week warning strike? series of Memorandum of Understanding. We moved away from Memorandum of Understanding to Memorandum of Action. Between 2013 and 2020, government is still yet to fulfill in terms of the memorandum of action it freely signed with our union. Uh, indeed, the only ongoing issue is the issue of uh, renegotiation. And that is also not even being faithfully, uh, the timeline for it is not being faithfully followed. Coupled with this, uh, the news uh, media has been awashed by all manner of threats from the Minister of Finance about uh, deliberate refusal to pay legitimate salaries to our members. So these agitated our members and at the last National Executive Council meeting of our union, which ended yesterday, the union decided that, well, it is imperative to sound a note of warning to government by going on a two-week warning strike to give government opportunity to put his house together and resolve all the outstanding issues in the memorandum of, uh, of action. Should government then feel our union will meet in two weeks to review the next line of action? Now, why is, it, why is ASO opposed to the use of the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, EPs, for lecturers? Uh, the reasons why we are opposed to IPPIS is in the public domain. But for the avoidance of doubt, our union has made it abundantly clear that what is called IPPIS in Nigeria is to erode university autonomy because it violates the laws establishing federal universities in Nigeria. Not only that, universities have peculiarities because they are uh, uh, universal citadels of learning, and those peculiarities have not been captured under the IPPIS platform. Now, now Dele, aside the payroll issue, your union says the strike is also to compel the federal government to implement the agreements in the 2009 ASU FGN agreement, the 2013 MOU, and the 2017 MOU, all of which have not been implemented. What, what possible reason is the federal government given this time? You will also recall that on this matter, our union met the president, and we thought that with meeting the president, all parties would uh, revert to status quo ante until all of these gray areas are resolved. But we can see the upfront of, I mean, the minister of finance, especially on the office of the president, because she has not shown any due respect to that office. And that's why she's been issuing threats to our members, which is now culminating in the failure of government to pay the February salaries of our members. So on the whole, we are opposed to IPPIS because it, it, it violates university autonomy. It has not taken care of the peculiarities of academic staff in Nigeria University. And as it has been revealed very recently, what is called IPPIS in Nigeria is fraud raised to power two. They have not given any reason. If uh, they... now, how optimistic are you that the government will listen with this latest move of yours? Terms of doubt. Let me tell you the issues, the outstanding issues. One, go government have promised to inject 1.1 um, trillion into the education sector to revitalize the key infrastructures in the university between 2013 and now. No dime has been released beyond the 200 billion released by the uh, Good Luck Jonathan administration. Not only that, 
uh, the end academic allowances of our members are yet to be paid in accordance with the memorandum of uh, action that we signed in 2019. Also, uh, the Federal Ministry of Education gave some specific guidelines for the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. As we speak, only one item in our document is still being discussed by the renegotiation, renegotiating committee. And then government promised that it was going to send visitation panels to Nigerian universities in order to arrest the decay and the tyrannical and dictatorial tendencies of university administrators. Since 2019 till date, none of the visitation panels have been constituted, let alone to visit the university. So these issues are legion, and it is the totality of it that is culminating in this strike. We have a government that is recalcitrant. Uh, they have not fulfilled agreements in one year. Uh, one would expect that in two weeks. But our expectation, the expectation of our union, is that we should all avoid an unnecessary crisis in the education sector. We are hoping that government will immediately call the leadership of our union to the negotiating table and discuss modalities for resolving all of these outstanding issues. Once that is done, we return to status quo ante. Now, just before I let you go this morning, what consideration was given to the effect of this strike on the students by the union? As we have always said, our strikes are to, a, a, to, to enable a conducive learning environment for our students. And we have always repeated that our union should not be held responsible for any disruption in the academic calendar. So this question should better be put at the doorstep of government because we have been sounding this note of warning since 2019 and beyond. Dele Ashiru, ASU President, Unilag Chapter, thank you for joining us on News on the Hour.